Uh, this video is a GANS experiment for CO2 GANS uh, using a do-it-yourself power supply. And uh, what this is, a two-quart mason jar. It's got 100% uh, uh, salt saturated water. And it's got a 2 inch by 8 inch zinc plate. And it's got, I'm going to unplug this second and show it. It's got a um, 3 16 by 12 inch carbon rod. It's a, it's a gouging rod for welding and I stripped off the copper. So I'll put that back in. It's the negatives connected to that. Okay, and I got an LED on here. And this LED, ha it's, it's a green LED with a 220 ohm resistor soldered onto the negative side over here. Okay, so it's running at uh, 5 volts and I'm getting 11.3, uh, 11.4 milliamps. And so uh, I did a batch like this uh, uh, a few days back and it came out real good and I liked it so I thought I'd try to repeat the experiment. Okay, I wanted to show this uh, do-it-yourself power supply because I it's very inexpensive and it's it's very convenient and uh, it all it is is this circuit board here which is a basically a DC to DC voltage regulator and it's got a multimeter in series uh, that measures the current so you can see the output voltage and you can see the current at the same time and it, it's very inexpensive like the circuit board here plus this multimeter together I got at eBay for under six dollars This is about five dollars and fifty nine cents that includes shipping and everything okay so what I like about this uh, this uh, power supply is that it runs on a variety of uh, DC power sources now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unplug this uh, this AC adapter is running on right now and get a better look at it Okay, this is a 12 volt 1 amp AC adapter, and these are very common. They're also very inexpensive. And there's plenty of power in this thing to run most any GANS job. And uh, I checked the price on eBay just last night, and I, I can get one of these for $1.75, and that includes uh, shipping. So that's pretty inexpensive, and it's very convenient. I'm going to plug it back in. Okay, so I want to show this circuit board a little bit, and... Uh, how it works now this uh, this uh, actual name for these things they're called step down buck converter it's it's a step down buck converter module and uh, this particular one has a 5 amp capacity and I like that because uh, a lot of these step down buck converters they're only good for like one or two amps and this one's got plenty of uh, uh, can handle plenty of current so I like that Okay, so the little red LED is lit up on this side of the board. It shows that what you're looking at the display is the output voltage. You press this button again, and now the red LED lights up on this side of the board, and that's telling you what the input voltage is. And it's saying that that uh, AC adapter right over there is uh, supplying 12.4 volts. I'll press it again, and I see the output voltage. I have it set to 5 volts. And you make the adjustments with a small screwdriver, and there's a trimmer... There's a trimmer pot on, on the circuit board right there. It's real small. And you just turn the screw, and you can set the voltage. Now, the reason I'm setting it to 5 volts is because uh, um, a lot of people who, do, who make GANs use a phone charger. And phone chargers nowadays are mostly USB. And all USB runs on 5 volts. So most of the, the newer phone chargers nowadays run on 5 volts. So that's why I set this up for 5 volts, because I wanted to see, you know, what I could get out of 5 volts, you know, on this test. Okay, so the uh, input voltage comes in on this side of the board, and it goes to these two screw terminals. You've got a positive and a negative. And then on the outside, uh, excuse me, the output side of the board, there's a, another set of screw terminals for the positive and negative. Now, I got the negative going to this black lead that goes directly into the leads that, that supplies the GANs. Now the positive lead I got going out the positive uh, side I got going out this red lead, and the red lead goes outside this box and it goes into this multimeter, uh, 
and then the output comes out of the multimeter and it goes back in to the box and then it goes directly into the red lead and that goes to the GANs. Now normally when you're setting up one of these circuit boards uh, you just send the output directly out here but I wanted to uh, monitor the current so that's why I put this multimeter in series that's why it's it's connected in this way. So um, it'll run any in DC input a power source between 4 volts and 38 volts and that gives a lot of range so that opens up a possibility to use a lot of different uh, AC adapters and power supplies and things of that nature I got right over here this is a modified computer power supply and uh, I'm just going to unplug this and I'm going to plug this in and uh, you can see it still runs 5 volts and if you check the input voltage this is running 12.7 volts, where the other one was running like I think 12.4 volts. So it just goes to show that you can use uh, any DC power source for this. Now, one thing that uh, there's a couple limitations with this, and um, I thought I'd go over it. And one of them is that uh, this uh, is a cheap multimeter, and it doesn't have auto ranging on the uh, on the uh, amps and you got to set it specifically for milliamps or you either set it for 200 milliamps or you set it for 10 amps and there's no other choices besides that and so what happens is uh, if this thing starts to go up and exceed 200 milliamps the screen will just go blank and you have to unplug it out of one plug and put it in another plug and turn the dial to set it for amps so that's kind of inconvenient but other than that it's pretty good now one other thing is this uh, circuit board is rated the output is rated to go down as low as 1.2 volts I believe and in my experience on this I could only get it to go down to 1.4 volts and if you need more precision and if you have to go down lower than 1.4 volts or 1.2 volts then this is not good for you, you you'll need to get like a, a, a lab uh, power supply that allows you to get a little more precision out of it. Okay, so I just wanted to say that for people, you know, if they want to build this, you know, it's got some limitation. So other than that, I think it's pretty good and it's very inexpensive and it's uh, pretty easy to put together. And so uh, it gives you some flexibility in what you can use for a power source. So uh, uh, that's the end of the video.